It was his gift, and he was the best. What I'm saying is just assume that this guy can hear and see everything that you're doing. He's a born tactician. Every move that he makes, it means something. That's a pawn being moved off the board. And if I were you, I'd be looking for the next piece. No, you can't stop him. What's up, everybody, and welcome to another episode with Supreme Decisions. And today, I actually want to do something with regards to resisting arrest. And the reason why I want to bring this up is because most of us are getting, or well, yeah, most of us are getting charged with it. And generally, there is no challenging of it. Now, I'm going to say this because most people don't understand what the context is is to actually have resisting arrest. But I'm gonna play a clip and then I'm gonna give you the examples and definitions to show you what is being done and what's being said is not generally what's actually happening. And this is one of the things which we can actually go into and take apart inside the actual police reports and also when we subpoena or file a motion for discovery for the video or body cams. So take a look at this and we'll be right back. Mr. Walsh. A resisting arrest charge requires the accused to create risk of bodily injury. Okay, now with that being done, you saw in order for there to be a resisting arrest, there has to be some means to which the person that is being arrested or the suspect that has been charged has to at some point come up with a cause for physical harm. Like I said, these are things that need to be challenged, but the challenge can be done via the video of the body cam um, because a lot of times the police officers are just doing that because it's about revenue and not about law. And a resisting arrest in most cases, not all, most cases are just for revenue. That is it. There is no actual text to it. But one of the things that causes a resisting arrest is fleeing a police officer while being arrested. Now, you also, you've seen me do a couple videos where I talked about um, Tennessee v. Gardner, where an officer discharging their weapon at a moving vehicle. Well, that's resisting arrest because they're fleeing. Now in that instance, I think the one I did with the Tennessee v. Gardner um, video, that was talking about a different context because it was more about the discharging of the weapon, not necessarily the resisting arrest portion of it. But if that driver was being arrested or about to be arrested, that would constitute resisting arrest. Now, if he was not being arrested and he drove off for whatever reason, you generally get something like fleeing the scene or some, some of that nature. But again, that's also something I'll get into later. But right now, we're going to deal with the context of fleeing a police officer while being arrested. Now, the second one would be threatening a police officer with physical violence while being arrested. Because again, the context of what's being said, what's being done, and what's being affected has to be done at least with the statute stating it in its entirety. And a lot of times they'll, oh, you threaten me with physical violence. Because even in the El Paso video, I think it was video 23, the officer was like, oh, well, quit trying to kick me. He was like, I'm not trying to kick you. And in that text, a lot of times they'll yell out something just so people can hear it and work as a witness to, well, he said this, or I heard this. And they use that context as a form of physical violence, which allows them to add the resisting charge. All right. And then we have three, 
physically struggling to free oneself from being restrained, handcuffed, or put into the police vehicle. Now, a lot of times you see that with people that are intoxic intoxicated or inebriated because they're high. So, if that's not you, don't worry about it. And then you have attacking a police officer while being arrested. I think if you know the context of all this, there's an intent to flee. There's an intent to cause harm, just as it was stated. Mr. Walsh. A resisting arrest charge requires the accused to create risk of bodily injury. If there is no intent, if there is no mens rea, remember we talked about that a lot? If there is no actual conscious act to free oneself or cause harm, there is no resisting arrest. And providing an officer with the false identification, either verbally or by presenting a false document, i.e. a fake ID. Now, here's the thing. If you do choose to speak with an officer and you give them something more than your first name or you elect to have a conversation with them because you have the right to remain silent while they do their investigation because you are not obligated to participate in their investigation. Why not just go ahead and be honest? Because at the end of the day, if you're going to talk to them, you might as well be honest. Don't give out stupid information. Don't, hell, if you're going to talk to them, don't give out more than your first name because that's all you are legally required to do. They have to go through the proper channels to get your fingerprints. They have to go through the proper channel to search you, your search of vehicle, your conveyance, what have you, searching the area around you. There has to be a legal means for the stop. You do not have to participate. If you have the inability to remain silent, I suggest you not do anything to have a police officer around you. So there's understanding, resisting arrest, fleeing a police officer, threatening a police officer, physically struggling with a police officer, attacking a police officer, all things that deal with causing harm. I'm going to play that clip one more time. Mr. Walsh. A resisting arrest charge requires the accused to create risk of bodily injury. If none of these exist, there is no resisting arrest. So keep that in mind. I thank you guys for donating. Cash App, Venmo, Apple Pay, Google Pay, and now Zelle. Let's keep going. Let's keep growing. Talk to you soon.